Thank you. Um, and to the organisers, thank you for putting on this fantastic event and inviting me along. This is a tremendous opportunity to speak in front of an audience of highly intelligent people with amazing ideas, many of which I'm sure are better than my own, uh, and be able to share with you uh, what I'm doing and hopefully over the networking breaks get some feedback from you. So who am I and what am I doing standing up here? Um, I was a PhD student at the University of Cambridge, um, working away on my PhD in nuclear and structural chemistry, um, building instruments to go on the end of a particle accelerator. Yes, I'm an extreme geek. Um, <laughs> as I was in the basement of a particle accelerator in the south of France, um, my thoughts turned to ovulation, as they do. Um, <laughs> I uh, had experienced um, second-hand, if you like, um, the problems in infertility. Um, my parents had uh, an absolutely awful time uh, bringing me into the world, um, and the family almost didn't survive as a result. Um, so I knew that this is a problem that faces many people, um, and it's uh, very significant in their lives. Um, and I was uh, trying to work out how molecules could twist a little bit when you whack them with a big laser, um, and that was not quite so fulfilling. Um, it was great fun, um, but uh, I came up with this idea um, for a way to change how that particular area of healthcare um, is delivered, um, the way in which fertility is treated. Um, and it's part of a very much bigger story about the way that healthcare is going and a few of the problems with healthcare that we have today. Um, so we've got, as far as I see it, three really major issues in healthcare. The first one is about demographics. Um, what I'm showing here is that the population is aging. Everyone's heard about that. Um, but we also, down the bottom here, um, have the under 20 band shrinking. So there's many older people requiring a lot more care. There's many fewer people that are coming in to provide the work and hence taxes and support for those people. Um, I'm dedicating my work at answering that equation, but uh, this part is really huge for a lot of the rest of healthcare. Um, healthcare costs a huge amount of money. Um, and. Uh, in some countries, it's getting up to, what, a quarter of GDP projected to be a third of GDP in the US uh, by 2025 or something like that. That's just an insane amount of money going on supporting ourselves. Um, and if it keeps going at the current rate, we just simply can't afford it. Um, you know, the numbers cannot keep going the way they are. And part of that is that we haven't really changed healthcare since uh, World War II. Um, you went into a uh, sort of semi-specialist environment where instead of having the witch doctor come and visit you, you had these sort of specialist people that would come around and visit you while you're sitting in a bed. Um, they would decide what your treatment plan would be. Um, they would then tell someone else what to do with you. You got wheeled out and uh, yeah, mostly it worked. Healthcare has really made amazing impact uh, on the entire planet. Um, we've eradicated huge important diseases. Um, so I don't want to um, rubbish it at all but the way in which it's been delivered hasn't changed significantly when technology has. So the patient demographics are changing dramatically and that's driving a lot of the costs. With technology, it is presently taking on average something like 10 years and $100 million to get a product to market. And that's part of the problem. You've got to make back that cash off your patients or off the healthcare system. Um, and so that means that you only deal with expensive diseases that you can take a lot of money out of. The incentives are horribly misaligned. The people who are currently in healthcare running it, they quite like this system because that's been paying the bills very well for the past several decades. And they'd quite like to continue in that. Um, and there's not a lot of room for you know, very significant disruption there because of the way people are working. So, three big trends that we're part of um, and that are gonna change the way healthcare is delivered in the next decade. First one is something called telemedicine. The idea is you're gonna be a patient where it's all about monitoring. Not so much about intervention. Understand what's going on first and then make appropriate intervention only if you need to. Second one is it's patient-centered care, right? The doctor shouldn't come in who's seen you for all of five minutes and decide everything about what's gonna happen with your treatment plan. You know an awful lot more about your medical history than 
any doctor possibly can. Right? Even if they connect up all the databases and get it all working, you still know more. Consumer pays healthcare is a huge issue, particularly in the US, and it's becoming an issue in Europe. Those people with the money are willing to spend it to get good care now, new technology quicker than all the existing systems are willing to pull that through. So if you have new technology, you're often best off going down the consumer route rather than to say the NHS or the big insurers uh, because you get to market quicker. So the example, hey, I know a lot about what I do, so uh, if you'll excuse the, the self-bias here. Um, I work in fertility, as I said, um, and it affects something like one in six of us. More people are affected by infertility than are affected by diabetes. You hear about diabetes all the time. You don't hear about infertility. It's something that people suffer in silence. They don't tell their friends about it. Right? Um, infertility is not the same as sterility. Infertility simply means that you did not conceive within a year of trying naturally. Okay? Um, and you can often get pregnant perfectly well. It's just you haven't had you know, luck or whatever is necessary for that success. So what we do is uh, we made this little sensor that a woman wears under her arm. It monitors her physiology thousands of times a day to ridiculous precision. And it downloads onto this little handheld reader. Uh, and that does a whole bunch of number crunching to work out what's going on in the woman's fertile cycle. Uh, you can plug that into your PC and you get a nice little history of what's going on. The really important thing, if you noticed on the last slide, is a USB port. All right? That means we can connect up to your home PC and send all of that data over the internet to our specialists in Cambridge. So although you're at home, we're collecting all of that data and we're comparing you to hundreds of other women. So if you've got some moderately rare condition, your doctor's probably never seen that before, or maybe a couple of times in his career. We saw it like 12 times before breakfast. Um, and that's what internet technology allows you to do if you take that data and work with it appropriately. So basically, we have this little sensor here. Uh, it monitors you. You have some little wireless handheld device, and there's going to be lots of other systems that are based on similar ideas in, in hospitals in the near future. That talks somehow to a computer system um, and the internet which goes somehow to a bunch of experts in whichever field who work out what's going on. Critically, they then send this data back through the computer, back to you as the patient, and they can tell you how to change lifestyle and behaviors. Uh, they can tell you what to look for, what might be interfering with what you're doing, what sort of treatment plan you should be on. And that's everything from drugs to, as I say, simple changes that can make a massive difference. So. Does it work? Yeah. <coughs> Duo Fertility, which is our product, um, we have the ability, because we collect all of this data, to look back at every one of the women who uses our system. Right? By comparison, an IVF uh, clinic, they see you know, a few hundred patients a year, and they kind of have an idea through published data about what's going on in the clinic down the road. We see everyone all the time. So we just look back at the data from our own customers, um, we segment that up into those that are sort of the difficult cases, the ones who have been through IVF before or qualify for IVF. Um, over six months, we just plotted out how many of these women who had qualified for IVF or been through IVF got pregnant, and this steps up over time. Uh, and eventually, after six months, we get to about a 20% success rate. And that, by the way, is the success rate for a cycle of IVF. Right? IVF is incredibly invasive. It involves essentially putting the woman through the menopause um, for a week or so, um, then uh, giving her the worst um, PMS of her life as she goes and gets massively stimulated ovaries. You then do a little bit of um, almost minor surgery to go and uh, take a needle and suck out the eggs that you're releasing. Um, you drop them in a petri dish or test tube, hence the test tube babies idea. Um, let them grow a little bit and then stick them back in uh, through another rather painful mechanism um, and then hope that they grow. Um, and also hope that you haven't had like quintuplets uh, and uh, also hope that um, you haven't uh, you know, made the woman sterile as opposed to infertile due to some of the complications that you can get. 
um, which are rather more common than many would like to admit. Up to 20% of women going through IVF suffer from ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome from the drugs that they're given to get their ovaries to go into overdrive. So what are we doing? Yeah, she's wearing this under her arm. Um, and that's it. Um, we don't change her body. What we do is we change the amount of information she has about her body. And our experts can go and look at that and identify what possible underlying conditions there might be that can have very simple treatments. Um, we don't go and uh, you know, use a huge resource of hospitals and uh, materials and specialists. We do have lots of specialists, but we're giving them just the information they need in a very short window of time so they can make the decisions that they need to with all the information at hand. So we're using technology to combat our chosen condition, which is infertility, right? Um, and uh, by comparison, it took us 18 months and a million dollars to get to market, right? We're a medical device. We're regulated. We've had to go through trials. But mostly it's about software and data, and that's what's truly disruptive here, right? So it doesn't cost a lot to develop new software by comparison to a lot of the medical stuff that goes on, like drugs, right? And it also doesn't take long because you can work like software companies do. We developed a piece of hardware, got it regulated, put it out there in a trial and developed the algorithms once we got the data in. And then we looked at how our customers use the product and what was important to them and how we could make the changes necessary to their lives whilst the product's already in the field. Every single one of our customers is an experiment. They're helping every other customer because their data is going into these big algorithms that are working out what's going on. And this is truly the future of healthcare. Rather than one doctor who learns a little bit about you and maybe talks to a colleague at a conference, get all of that together in one place and use all of it at once. Not only that, but at the same time, just for us, exactly the same technology is being used or trialed in all of these areas. The same piece of technology that we built, it's just the maths that's different. And you can turn a fertility monitor, quite obviously, into a contraceptive. Um, then you can go into things like sleep monitoring, chronic pain, pediatric care, elderly care, right at the other end of the life cycle. Right? And it's simply about the maths and the data. And once you've got the product regulated once, it's a doddle to get it through for each of these other areas. So it costs even less per application, which is the exact opposite of how it normally works in healthcare. So that's an area that I think is absolutely ripe for disruption. Thank you.